Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to crack WEP wireless encryption. Okay, so for our WEP key, I'm going to use a 128 bit WEP key. And just for the sake of being able to recognize it whenever we actually do crack it, I'm going to use 11223344 all the way to 99 and then AA, BB, CC, and DD for our hex characters in our 128 bit key. And now we'll switch over to our backtrack machine. All right, so we'll start with an Airmon NG. Start WLAN 0, and that'll create a monitoring interface associated with our WLAN 0 interface. And as you can see, that's Mon0. Then we'll use an arrow dump NG, Mon0, and to be able to see everything. Uh, so here we've got our uh, ESSID soggy meatball. And as you can see, it's using web encryption. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go ahead and copy the BSSID or the MAC address associated with that wireless access point. And then we're going to use arrow dump ng BSSID and then we're going to paste the MAC address for our access point and then channel and then specify the channel that the access point is on which is channel 6 and then write and then we'll put the file name which I am going to use uh, meatball and then mon0 which is our monitoring interface and what that'll do is it'll start dumping packets that it picks up uh, from that to and from that access point and it'll start dumping it in that file name on the directory from which I ran the command Alright, and now what we want to do is we want to uh, replay some of the ARP packets. So we're going to use uh, replay ng b and then the MAC address of the uh, access point or the BSSID, then dash h and the MAC address of the host. And then mon0. Oh, and uh, we want to specify ARP packets. So that's going to be uh, error replay ng 3. And. Uh, now, ARP packets, even when they're encrypted, it's a uh, fixed length protocol. So it can actually discover ARP packets based on just the length of it, even when it's encrypted, and then replay those back to the network to generate traffic. Um, now, once you start getting ARP requests, it'll actually start picking up the ones that you replay back into the network. So as soon as you start getting them, they'll start growing exponentially. You'll start generate hundreds and hundreds of them really fast. All right, and depending on the length of your shared key, uh, whether it's a 64-bit web key or a 128-bit web key is going to determine how much data you actually need to collect that's encrypted with that shared key in order to uh, actually break it. And so what we can do is uh, alongside our arrow dump and our uh, ARP packet injection we can go ahead and run our air crack ng in order to uh, start trying to break our web key so we'll go ahead and open another terminal
and we'll use ls in order to see the files in the directory and we're going to run aircrackng and then we're going to run that on our capture file which is meatball-01.cap and what that'll do is it will analyze the capture that's currently been made so far and attempt to uh, crack the key now I can pretty much guarantee you because we're using a 128-bit key it's not going to happen this first time fortunately what aircrack does is it will actually automatically start or restart attempting the crack at uh, each different threshold and you'll see that momentarily and here it is automatically trying again since it hit 15,000 and I think it usually sets at about 5,000 increments by default so every 5,000 uh, on data it'll retry to crack it And as you can see, it failed again, but it intends to try again at 20,000 initialization vectors. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead here, because it's probably going to be a while until it actually cracks it. And here we are with about 58,000 bytes of data and it should be trying again here at 60,000 uh, initialization vector bytes And we have success. As you can see, there's our 128 bit web key 11223344556677889988 AABBCCDD. Decrypted correctly 100%.